welcome to Project Library Planet. We are in Norway, in a small town called Drammen, not far from Oslo. We're here to see the local library, of course, what else? How will it surprise us? What does it look like? Who comes here and who works here? Let's go and explore. the development department of this library. Hi. Hi. So can you please tell us about the library a little bit? Um, when did it start? Well, actually, uh, this year we are 100 years old, the public library. No in, uh, way. Yeah. Wow. It's really, really cool. Uh, and, uh, and also this library, this building where we're, uh, we're in now, this was the first time in Norway that three libraries uh, joined forces. This was the county library the public library and the university college library. Mm -hmm. uh, joined forces and moved in together about 10 years ago. So this is now the building we're in right now. Okay. Mm, which is uh, um, really beautiful, as you can see. Mm. It is, isn't it? Uh, was this building always a library, meant to be a library, or was it something else before? No, this area here was used to be uh, industry, paper industry. So parts of, of the old uh, factory buildings were preserved, and then uh, we have built this new this new building here, this new library. So they um, uh, sort of contrast each, each other. And that's a nice way to try and preserve the history and then point, point the direction towards the future at the same time. So is the library a popular place in town? Is it cool? Probably not the coolest place. And uh, maybe also we're not to, supposed to be cool. Uh, maybe we can be a meeting place. Uh, we have this uh, a couple of years ago. We uh, we had this uh, got this new library law in Norway, where it says that now libraries are not just supposed to uh, give books to people or give films and music to people, but but also be a meeting place where uh, the public debate can take place and where people can meet and integrate and get to know each other. So um, sort of like a literary house, so to speak. And I think this is one of our most fundamental and important tasks to be at this place where people can come and just sit around and read or discuss with each other or learn new stuff or teach us new stuff and, you know, be together. Um, if this is cool, I think it's very cool. Uh, <laughs> probably depends on who you ask, but, um, but that is anyway the, the, really, uh, the, the thing we're trying to, to make happen. has a thing called pop cult. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? Well, with pop cult, the library wanted to uh, make a different youth section um, because often uh, youth sections are just uh, a corner in the library where you put some books and some furniture. But here, uh, the library wanted to make something more, uh, a collection of books and music and games. Uh, for example, here you have the playstations and here you have the books uh, and movies. Uh, uh, that all took uh, youth culture seriously from the standpoint of youth. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, uh, the library applied for uh, grants, and that was the uh, sort of the beginning of the whole thing. Now the pop cult um, uh, stuff has been put together with the makerspace, so everything is one thing up here. But the goal was to sort of to, to make a place uh, and to make a collection that took youth seriously and uh, was meaningful and you know, substantial, but not school. Something different, but, but uh, something more than just noise. Something, something that uh, youth could identify with. Does that also mean you have some events here? Uh, yes, we have, um, uh, we have every, every half year we plan for the next uh, next six months 
um, different events uh, for adults, for youth, for children, uh, storytelling for example, lectures, um, stuff happening in the uh, makerspace with 3D printing. So we try to to have a broad range of of things uh, happening so that we can apply it, uh, we can um, um, reach, reach uh, different groups of people. And how do you reach out to youth? How do you get them to come here? Well, we try to make stuff that are relevant to them. Sometimes when you try to, or people try to communicate with uh, young adults or youth, they, uh, they try to talk to them uh, from the standpoint of uh, adults. And here in PopCult, we wanted to speak to them from their um, sort of view on the reality. And so that's what we're trying to do, to try to sort of speak the language. So you work in the makerspace here. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please tell us why is there a makerspace and what do you do here? Well, we uh, think it's really important that the library is not just a place for uh, books and movies and music, but a place where people can come together and be creative together and meet new people and learn from each other. So that's basically the idea behind the makerspace. And as you can see, we've, we have uh, 3D printers, we have musical instruments, we have effects, pedals and guitars that people can borrow with them home if you want to. And we, uh, this, is, this is recently new. We opened in November last year. Uh, so we're still trying to sort of grow the family around uh, the makerspace. But um, people are interested and uh, they come here to uh, print their, their own design project or to, uh, to record their music or just to see what's going on. And who comes here usually? A um, very diverse uh, group actually. Uh, we have teenagers coming to look at the 3D printers. We have musicians coming to use the synthesizers. Uh, we have um, uh, some school classes coming here, school groups. Uh, and we have um, uh, adults who come here to, uh, to look at uh, the printer or use the printers. Can you tell me something? Is a 3D printer a really useful instrument or is it just a fancy bit of technology? It's a fantastically useful instrument because it's, we're looking now at, uh, well it's not actually the beginning, but it's, it's now becoming mainstream, this technology, uh, that probably will be central in the years and the decades to come where people can, uh, instead of going to buy something, they can make it for themselves. And by that, you also stimulate the creativity of people. Uh, so if they need, for example, a new, uh, anything for anything, or they, uh, they have a practical tool that they need, or a practical uh, job that they have to make, or, or make work, they can make their stuff themselves and they send it themselves instead of buying or making or getting other people to make it for them. So you s stimulate people's ability to, people's creativity, which is really cool. This is all very great, but suppose I don't know anything about 3D printing and I really need something printed or done and I've mm -hmm. no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Then you can come here uh, every Tuesday. We have uh, Makerspace Tuesday from 12 to 7.30. At that time we're here all the time and we can tutor you or we can help you or we can print for you. And we also are now implementing a new, um, a new project where people can be tutored and then certified as professional users by us so that uh, they can print by themselves. Uh, which of course will be very good for the makerspace because then they can print every day of the week. But the equipment is a little bit advanced to use and you have to have some experience to be able to troubleshoot it and so forth. So um, therefore we have to tutor people thoroughly before uh, they get to use it for themselves. And then in time we probably, hopefully, will have this, this larger family around the makerspace of people who know the stuff know the equipment and who can then pass on their knowledge to others. So we can sort of take a step back and just let everything grow.
organically, so to speak. What about those musical instruments? Uh, you said they mm -hmm. they can be given to uh, anyone with a library card. Yep. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You want to have a look at them? Yes, let's mm -hmm. go. Thanks. Yep. So what have you got here? Well, here we have different musical instruments. For example, we have the uh, ukuleles, and we have the guitars, and then we have the effect pedals. And we like to think of this as uh, empowering our, uh, our um, uh, guests to explore their own musical creativity. For example, teenagers who most likely won't be able to afford this kind of equipment, they can come here and borrow this on their library card and then take it home and then explore um, their musical talent and this in the big picture this is like saying to people that you each one of you have something creative and something valuable inside of you and we want to help you get that out and what do i see over there oh here we have our uh, fantastic little we call it a mini studio it's, it's very small but we have here two uh, one uh, electric piano. We have hooked that up to the garage band, which is uh, simple to use for everybody. Anyway, if I wanted to record here, I just press record there. There we go. Doesn't it bother the other guests that you're playing here, that people are playing here? We have, we have uh, many areas in the library where uh, some areas are quiet and some are meant to be, be a little noisy. And this makerspace is meant to be a little noisy, so to speak. So if you are around here, that's sort of the way it is. Uh, because we want people to, if we want people to express the creativity and, and work together to make stuff, you have to allow for noise. Otherwise, it's, it doesn't work. Look at this building behind me. Can you guess what it is? I bet you'd never even think that this old tower is actually a part of a library. Fair warning, you've never seen anything this unusual in a library. They say the acoustics in here are amazing. You can fit up to 25 people here, plus two guys with guitars. The library holds concerts and sometimes also exhibitions here. It's a perfect space to chill, don't you find? If you're ever in Norway, do visit Drummond and this amazing library. Bye-bye and see you on Library Planet.